A mere two years ago, I was a lowly goblin seeking out useless quests to juice as much dopamine as possible. From quests like Squolith on TikTok and the quest of spanking my monkey three times a day. As anyone does, I got sick of it. I got sick of gaining no levels, so I sought out some quests that would actually warrant me some experience. Through these quests, I built an aesthetic physique, built a brain that's just happier, able to focus on things better, and I even built the YouTube channel you're watching right now. I tell this little story because as goofy as it sounds that I'm referring to myself as a little goblin, I know how it feels to not progress. It's one of the most depressing, demotivating feelings that exists. But from my own experience, I know it's more than possible to actually level up in life. If you want to dial in this school year and actually become overpowered, put this video on full screen and listen up. First things first is mental health. And before you click off this video because you want some like David Goggins motivation, please listen, this is so important. We always hear about mental health and how much it matters, but we're never actually told how to take care of it. Not really. Before I ever started caring for my mental health, I still went to the gym, I still lifted, I still considered myself on self-improvement, but something always felt kind of off. And it was because I just didn't care for my mental health. So the first thing I did was I decluttered my mind. Especially in the modern age, we're kind of force-fed stimulation. You know, you can scroll on TikTok and at the same time look at softcore prawn. And, you know, it's just like all at once, all that to your brain. It clutters it up. It makes it messy. A good analogy is you got to feed your brain the same way you would feed your body. If you want a healthy brain, feed it healthy stuff. Things like social media and prawn are the most junk food brain material you could get. So the first thing I did to declutter my brain was I deleted most social media. First TikTok, then Instagram. <coughs> Within a week of deleting them, I already had noticed, like I could just focus so much better. I didn't get the urge to grab my phone and distract myself because I couldn't. Next thing I did, which is something I know a lot of young people deal with, is I quit Prawn. I started watching Prawn when I was 11 years old. First time I saw it was sixth grade and I started watching it a lot in seventh until I eventually quit. So I was very young being exposed to this stuff. I'm sure most of you can relate. Watching such hyper-sexualized content like that on the daily, not only does it screw up your wiener, kind of make it harder to get hard, but it screws up your perception of women. All these guys are talking about, you know, I want to pull girls, you know, I want a girlfriend. You can't expect to get a girlfriend if you have such a skewed sexual view of girls. There's many methods in which you can quit prawn. The main method I recommend is weaning off. So basically, you just spank your monkey throughout the week less and less until you're just not doing it at all. And I'll be the first to say it. There's nothing wrong with occasionally spanking your monkey. As long as you just don't watch prawn. Prawn is the main negative impact with that. I personally don't tickle the pony at all, but I know some of you guys are hornier than me. Anyways, once you delete social media and you quit prawn, you will feel your brain be decluttered. It'll feel like a cloud is lifted off of you. You're in like a new layer of reality. You're just so much more present in the moment, not constantly thinking, buzzing. So once you declutter your brain from the junk food type content, then you can start feeding it the good stuff. So the main two habits I started doing when I first got into taking care of my mental health was journaling and meditating. Both are very simple. I'm not going to sit here and run your ear off about them. For meditating, you just sit and focus on your breath for five minutes. I recommend the app Medito. It's great, it keeps a streak and you know, has a nice guy talk to you while you're meditating. Journaling, there's two main forms of journaling, gratitude journaling and what I like to call puke journaling. Gratitude journaling is where you just wake up every morning and write down five things you're grateful for. What this does is it puts your mind in a more gratitude way of thinking, right? You'll see a bird and be like, man, I'm grateful for that bird. It's just a good feeling. And then puke journaling, it's kind of like therapy with yourself, right? You write down what you're feeling, maybe an event that's happening, maybe childhood trauma, literally anything, and you just write about it as much as you can, spilling out and puking everything you can from your brain. Also, just 
breathing in general. Before I consciously thought about breathing, I feel like I didn't really breathe that much. You know, I was a very shallow breather. And this builds up a lot more anxiety than you would think. So this kind of goes hand in hand with meditation, but make sure throughout your day to just breathe in fully, deeply through your stomach, through your chest, you know, just feel the breath. It sounds like some voodoo tree hugger shit, but it is scientifically proven. Breathing helps your mental health. So once you've decluttered your mind and started doing the good habits as well, then you just want to consume the right content. So from my own experience, this is only like a couple months ago. This isn't even from when I was, you know, younger, but I would watch a lot of cop cam videos, you know, where it's like people getting arrested for doing some crazy shit. And the videos would always just be them getting shot. Like it always just be them either getting, you know, beat or shot or something like that or something terrible happening. And I would watch this on the daily, and then one day it clicked, like, this is probably not good for my mental health at all. So you gotta kinda analyze what you're watching. I'm not saying you can't watch anything that has negative connotation, because, you know, if you know Nexpo, Nexpo makes the best videos. I still watch some Nexpo. You know, it's not that you gotta completely cut off every bit of content that there is. Just take it easy. To give you direct advice about what kind of content to consume, either find content that puts you in a peaceful state of mind or find content that gives you some value. Personally, I listen to like Skyrim ambience music because it's just very peaceful. It's nice to just sit there, maybe sit outside, you know, sit on my sofa outside and just listen to Skyrim ambience. And I also listen to podcasts and obviously read books. And it's definitely good to listen to podcasts and read books that have some real world value. But sometimes I'll listen to some podcasts about prehistoric creatures that are extinct. It's still valuable, it's still information, and it's not brain rot. That's really the criteria for good content. So if you declutter your mind, start doing good mental health habits and consume the right content, I guarantee your mental health will exponentially increase in quality. So the next thing to do to become overpowered this school year is do some sort of exercise. Personally, I do hypertrophy. I started doing it two years ago put about 40 pounds of muscle on and it's completely changed my self-confidence, my self-perception, how other people perceive me. But obviously you don't have to do hypertrophy, you can do whatever, just as long as you're exercising in some way. In the description, I'll link some free home workouts you can do to just get started if you have no idea what to do, but I'm not gonna ramble on about this, it's pretty self-explanatory. So the past two things I've talked about, mental health and physical health, both lean in that delayed gratification area, right? You're delaying that fun, that dopamine in order to, you know, gain it later by progressing in something. But the next thing I want to talk about is more instant gratification based, which is your social life. I think one thing in self-improvement that's very glossed over is social life, having a good social life. I can say from my experience that socially and in my social life, that's where the most rememberable moments happen. That's where I'm having the most fun. That's where I'm the most happy. So it's definitely important to keep it in mind. What I like to do is this thing called weekly adventures. So at least once a week, you go out with your friends or maybe even by yourself and you just do some shit. Maybe it's fishing. Maybe it's exploring like an abandoned factory. It can literally be anything. Just make it a goal at least once a week to do something socially. We always hear about dopamine and how it's like, I don't know, it's kind of got a negative connotation to it. Like, eh, you consume too much dopamine. But having a good social life and going to social events and hanging out with people, that is probably the most healthy, natural, and best way to get dopamine. I mean, as long as you're not doing stupid shit like, you know, snorting cocaine or something. If you're going into the school year and you never really had a set friend group, you don't have like a set of friends, make it a goal this year to talk to people. I've always kind of had a set friend group throughout my school experience, but I remember before I was really good at talking or talking to people, I would go out of my way during lunchtime and I would go up to people in the lunch line and I would talk random shit. I would just shoot this shit with random people. And it helped a lot. Like I have no social anxiety anymore. I would say I'm quite good at talking to people. It's a skill you gotta learn and it's a skill you learn just by doing not by watching a video about how to be more charismatic. Obviously, there are helpful tricks in a social situation, 
whatever, like fucking making eye contact. That's all basic stuff. You kind of pick up on that over time. So now you've improved your mental health. You've improved your physical health. You've improved your social life. Now into that productivity, how to dial in. So the reason I put everything I did before this video, like mental health, physical health, social life, is because being productive is based off all of those things. If you've mastered your mental health, physical health, and social life, being productive is 10 times easier. Since you've decluttered your brain and improved your mental health, you're not gonna sit and overthink. You know, you're not gonna sit and wanna scroll on TikTok. Since you've improved your physical health, you know, you're just breathing better, you just feel better. But anyhow, productivity is as simple as any other self-improvement habit. In fact, I like to compare it to the gym with progressive overload. So in the gym, you go and you use a certain weight, say you're using 50 pounds, you pump it for 10 reps. Next time, you grab a 55 pound weight and you pump it for 10 reps. And that's progressive overload. You slowly increase the weight over time so you get stronger and you build more muscle. You're gonna wanna do the same exact thing with your mind. We're kind of tricked into thinking that we're supposed to just automatically be able to sit down and do like eight hours of work dialed in just like that. That's just not how it goes. I'm sorry. Now our mind works the same way as our muscles. So instead, next time you're going to sit down and do work, set a timer for a time you're comfortable with and just do that work dialed in with no distractions. And then the next day when you're going to do work, increase that time by like 10 minutes. 15 minutes, something like that. And then increase that time every day. And once you get to a certain level where you can do like four hours completely dialed in every day, then you can separate it two hours, take a 30 minute break, two hours, take a 30 minute break. And if you keep building this productivity skill over time, you will be able to get an insane amount of work done. But you gotta remember, you can't just expect to jump into like six hours of work and for it to go smoothly. You got to progressive overload your mind. But besides progressive overloading your mind, something that also really helps when it comes to being productive is environment. Before I do any schoolwork or any YouTube work, I make sure it is silent. I close my door and I put on my headphones and sometimes I'll pop on some Skyrim ambience and I'll just make sure everything is at peace. My room is clean. Environment matters a lot when it comes to being productive. Because think of it like this. You're sitting at your desk. Your desk is messy, right? You got shit all over it. You can still work. Like you still have room to whack away on your keyboard and use your mouse. But there's stuff everywhere. Little trinkets, fun little fucking things. I don't know. You're so much more likely to lose train of thought simply by looking at your desk. And if your desk was clean, you know, there's nothing to look at, right? You can just dial in on what you're doing. So environment is a big thing when it comes to getting work done. So make sure your environment is solid. I know procrastination is a big struggle with a lot of people. I mean, I still struggle with procrastination. I know a lot of people, their method to deal with it is to write out a daily schedule that they follow every single day. But I think there's actually a better way to go about it, which is right when you wake up, writing out a short-term schedule for that day. Having like a rigid schedule that's written out and you gotta follow that exact one every single day. I mean, it, it, life gets in the way, you know what I mean? Things don't always go as planned. So in my opinion, it's better to have a short-term schedule that you write out right when you wake up because not only does that set the intention for the day, but it's just so much more flexible. Everything I've said in this video so far is very simple. I think a lot of people think self-improvement and just progressing as a human, getting better is complex, but it's not complex. It's just hard because it takes willpower and it takes effort. But I think that feeling of fulfillment at the end of the day, because you're one step closer to your goals or you're 1% better than you were yesterday is so worth the effort it takes. So now I'm going to throw a curveball at you. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is physical appearance. I already talked about lifting and how getting aesthetic is cool. It's pretty poggers. But there's a growing culture of looks maxing and whatnot, which I think is a bit vain, but I do understand. I definitely understand the whole sentiment of wanting to glow up in high school. So let me save you some time here. As someone who did glow up in high school, you don't need to mew. You don't need to fucking jelk and make your wiener longer. It's none of that. Simply lifting 
Getting good sleep, washing your face, brushing your teeth, and finding a good hairstyle, as well as, you know, pimping up your style a bit, that's really all you need in order to glow up. The most attractive people tend to be the most healthy people. And if you're younger, you're like 13, 14 watching this video, and you're worried about glowing up, I understand, right? I was pretty fucking ugly when I was 13, and I was like, oh, come on, please, I just want girls to like me and whatever, shit like that. It happens over time. Take care of yourself. Puberty will hit. You know, you will mature. Looks maxing as a concept is helpful. It's good to be attractive. It feels good to look good. But being obsessed over it is going to ruin your mental health. And mental health, that's number one. That's why it's the first thing I talked about. So do not base your mental health, do not base your happiness, do not base your happiness off how you look. But the next thing I recommend doing, and this is something that actually helped me so much more than I thought it would during high school, and that's getting a hobby. So going into high school, I had no hobbies. My hobby was playing video games, specifically Rust. I have 700 hours on Rust. So I had no hobbies. I had no life, really. But sophomore year, 10th grade, I started playing the guitar as like a fun little side thing. And I actually got really into it. And now I'm pretty decent. And I ended up getting to play in the talent show at my school and we took first place. I know it's like fucking, that's some like Diary of a Wimpy Kid shit. Greg Halfley would play in the talent show. But having hobbies just makes you feel so fulfilled even if the hobby isn't, you know, making you a better person. Just knowing you can play a cool lick on the guitar or, you know, you know how to play a good game of chess. It's a good feeling. But speaking of chess, I have a Discord server based around self-improvement with a lot of like-minded people in it. And I plan on running a chess tournament pretty soon. If you wanna to talk to me directly in a one-on-one -on -one call, I currently have free calls that you can schedule yourself for, link in the description. But I promise you, if you actually implement what I've told you in this video, from my experience, you will become overpowered. Imagine you doing all the good habits I talked about in this video, but imagine yourself a year down the line. You'll probably be quite the Adonis creature. But on that note, I'll see you in the next one. Comment down below your favorite episode of Regular Show. See ya.